Hello everyone, welcome back to Paris, the nicest place on earth to get lung cancer. Today, I wanna to talk about something that I have spoken about before, and that's burnout. I get the question myself quite often, how do you play this game? Every variant of that kind of question that you can imagine. And for me, the answer is simple. My job does not stop just because I'm uninterested in the game. There's times where my job's really fun, there are times when it's not really fun. And right now we're more in the not category, but YouTube is an insatiable beast that must continue to be fed. And how I feel about anything doesn't matter. It just doesn't. But of course, during these very tumultuous times, the, the question has been popping up more and more in my streams, my social media, Reddit, I literally see people every day questioning their playtime. Like, what am I doing? This guy with 2,000 hours, this guy with 3,000 hours. I don't know what to do in the game anymore. Nothing interests me. I just log in and I sit in orbit and then I log out or I go to the tower and I just jump around like an idiot. It, it, people acting like they're forced into playing the game against their will. And while I was away, I saw an article come out talking about Diablo 4 and some of the issues that people are having with that game. Diablo 4 is not even in season one yet, and people are losing their minds over some of the end game situation. World bosses are just like instantly dying, the drop rates of this, drop rates of that, nightmare dungeons or something, whatever people are complaining about. I don't know, I only made it to level 49 before I just kind of had to rotate off the game. In reality, I do feel like it's a somewhat similar problem to other games. Eventually, there stops being new or challenging things to go do, and hitting that end point can feel really bad if you're really invested or really interested in that game. The same thing happened to me on Borderlands 3. I've said the story a bajillion times. I hit max level. I got geared out. I beat all the hardest stuff on the hardest difficulty, and then I got so geared that we just stomped it into the ground, and then I was good after that. I was good. I felt good with how much I, I got to play and what I accomplished, and then I just, just kind of moved away. I, I moved on. After talking with a friend who did do the level 100 killed Uber Lilith, whatever it's called, grind in Diablo 4, it is somewhat clear that it is a very familiar situation. The Omega gamers grinded the hell out of the game and ran out of stuff to do. That's not to say that the game is without flaws. I just don't know what they are because I haven't really played it past level 49. But it is something every game of this kind eventually experiences. And in a recent dev live stream, the Diablo 4 devs in season zero of their game, told people to just take a break. If you're feeling done, you're feeling burnt out, take a break. And this is not some profound statement. You know, other devs have spoken about this before. Bungie has spoken about this before. It was a very long time ago, but they have. You play when there's new stuff to play, you get off when you're just not feeling it anymore. But I don't know what it is about certain games that people just feel the need to permanently latch on even if they don't want to play anymore. Just like forcing themselves to play. That's not healthy. That's not healthy to do. And I don't feel like it should take a streamer or a YouTuber to literally tell you to your face that you should stop playing a thing if you don't enjoy it anymore. Like it, it shouldn't, I, I, it has in the past for me. I've literally said back to people like, well, you know, like, why don't you want to play anymore? Or this or that, or like literally just ask the question back to them and they answer it on their own. So like, I don't know. I, I get it all the time throughout the history of the franchise. Hey, Dado, not really enjoying the game anymore. I just kind of log on and jump around the tower for 20 minutes and then I log off. I still really like the game. I like the franchise. I'm just not feeling it right now. What should I do? And pretty much every time, I tell that person to take a break, which on occasion brings up the fear of missing out situation. One that I think is not nearly as big of a problem as people think it is anymore. Like, look, just because you stop playing a game 
doesn't mean you are banished from ever following it ever again. Like you can still keep up with like news and updates and all that. That's why I'm here to keep you informed, to keep you updated. So if something comes out where I'm really excited for a thing or really positive about a thing, like a gun, piece of content, blah, 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 that's something you could probably swing back to the game for, assuming you already own the content. Uh, I'm guessing a good portion of viewers have the annual pass, but you know, I, I would like to know how, like what percentage of people buy seasons individually like buy them piecemeal as opposed to just getting the the annual pass maybe i'll take a poll in the community section soon i don't know that i think that'd be interesting because in just in my mind i'm just like if you're an enthusiast you just get the annual pass and that's it um but like what are people afraid of actually missing out on at this point like genuine question real question like is it a seasonal gun is it like not doing like a certain mission or something when it comes to guns at this point in the game's life, there are only so many guns that are going to be like meta breaking meta defining weapons. And even when they do exist, there's usually some kind of replacement weapon for that particular gun. And you're not really going to be that far behind. And like, regardless of all of that, some of these meta breaker weapons are only super important for people playing at the absolute highest levels of the game all the time. Like you're running GMs all the time. You're consistently rating master rating. You're doing speed run stuff. If you don't farm an Omega God roll of the dungeon rocket, you're still going to be just fine playing the game. And if someone does boot you from a raid or give you problems for not having it, they're an asshole and you're better off not playing with that person anyway. <laughs> you know, I, I will always try to keep you as informed as I can when it comes to stuff like that. But most of the time, a season's going to have what? One or two guns that are worth chasing down. And most of the time, you'll be able to chase those one or two guns down without it being too painful of an experience, especially now with crafting. You know, if you're a dad with seven kids, nine jobs, 18 minutes to play every six weeks, I can't help you there. But also, maybe consider a different game at that point. Uh, you know, Destiny is kind of a game that's built with the intent of playing it a little more often than that. You know, if you have that little amount of play time, then yeah, I, I can't help you there. Um, if you're concerned about story, missing out on the story, there are tons of resources out there that will like not only break down the story from the week, but will dive into deeper detail that you likely would not have on your own. They'll cover it week by week. People will cover it week by week. They'll cover the entire season. They'll cover extra little bits. Like you can find that stuff without turning on the game at all. I think maybe a big thing for a lot of people is, is the season pass, like hitting hundred on the pass. And yeah, you know, that is a bigger time investment that you need to make. But even just logging in once a week, banging out some of these, you know, easier seasonal challenges is, is going to get you a lot further along in the past than you think. Making full use of that bonus XP that you get every reset, like your next five levels have like hyper speed basically, is really key to minimizing the amount of time that you spend getting levels and minimizes how much you need to do extra grinding. You know, one of the ways that some of my friends play is to play the expansion and maybe a little bit of the season that comes with it. They ditch the game until the final season and then they can play all the new stuff with no time gates, no waiting. You can just play everything that you want right away, mostly. It does leave you with a limited amount of time to actually do those things, you know, about three months. But that should be enough time to get through the weekly story beats for all these seasons, especially considering what Bungie has been asking us to actually do in those missions as of late, which has been not that much, not that much, you know, not really a big deal to clear out a throne world law sector or something like that. You could also just wait until all of the story content in a season has been released and play it on like a season by season basis. Uh, that is totally fine too. They're, there are many ways to play the game that don't involve monotonously playing in ways that you don't want to. There is no one forcing your hand. Like you can play at your, at your leisure. You know, I, I promise that you're not missing out on nearly as many things as you think you might be. 
And for the things that are good, again, people will tell you. There's there's no more secrets on the internet. When it comes to this stuff, there's no more secrets. I will tell you, someone will tell you, you know, wait for season recaps, wait for reviews, first impressions. I know that it's crap that you can't buy old seasons from the year individually. Like once season 21's over, you can't buy it individually, which is annoying. Go figure the one people are actually willing to spend <laughs> silver on isn't offered in the store. But trust when I say that missing one season, even two seasons, it's not going to be the end of the world. All these videos that, that people release, that I release, new meta this, new top DPS weapon that, new craziest build, it doesn't matter that much. It really doesn't. There are, I don't know, maybe 200 teams that participate in the world first raid race that that kind of stuff actually matters to you, like really matters. And like five speed running groups. Everyone else... It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Uh, it's it's not that deep. It's really not that deep. And if you're so concerned with such a thing, with like with FOMO, then my suggestion continues to be waiting, getting some reviews, getting some opinions, and then making a purchase decision based on your current love of the game, the items within the season, and how much time you have to play. Don't pre-order, don't get the Omega Deluxe Diamond Edition right away unless you know that you're going to play no matter what, right? Uh, I think some of this also has to deal with the fact that we are at the end of this part of the game's story. Like, we're, we're moving into an era, like a like part two, next year, less than a year from now. We'll be in, in, in the second era of the game, whatever that means. And I wonder if people are afraid of feeling like if they burn out now, they're not going to like want to see the end or anything like that. Like they're too far along to miss out on the rest of the things. Like you've invested too much time to give up now. But again, like I, it's not that deep. You can take a season off. You can take some time away and still want to see how it all ends or like come back for final shape and just play that. Like the, the bungee marketing machine, dude, it's crazy. Like community sentiment is so down right now. I'm talking like season two, season 10 down. But you know the moment that Bungie starts that final shape showcase, none of this stuff's going to matter. <laughs> Everyone's just going to get hyped again. I'm going to get hyped again. You're going to get hyped again. That excitement's going to return. I promise you. Or maybe it doesn't. That's okay. Maybe you just want to see how it ends. You can hop off the train. That's fine too. I know a lot of people are probably going to finish out this era of the game and then... And then they're out of here. But it's not that deep. Missing a gun, missing a season, it doesn't matter that much, man. You're going to have a much better relationship with the game if you don't force yourself to play it. And I always hear from people how refreshing it is to come back after a season, two seasons, taking a break, a year, two years. Come back and, you know, they come back to the game and they take in all the new things and the new systems and whatever else. It's a surprise to them and they feel rejuvenated. They feel refreshed. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's okay to take a break, you know, and it's clear that there are some people out there who really need to hear that. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a 50 hour, 500 hour, 5,000 hour gamer. Take some time off if you're not feeling it. You know, best thing that you can do for yourself. It's a video game. It's a thing literally designed for leisure. If you're not having a good time, just put it down. Come back later. It's not that deep. You know, it's really not that deep. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.